Look, I was always a chubby kid, been Italian and grown up in a, an Italian home. There's always something to eat. And when I got to about 18 or 19, I was over 100 kilos. About the age of 23, I decided to join a gym to lose weight and to get fit. And there's an old chap there called uh, George, and this guy was a health fanatic. One time, George says, look, Frank, it's great that you're coming here, but if you don't change the way that you eat or what you're eating, you're not going to live a long, healthy life. He turns it around and he grabs his book in behind the counter and he hands it over to me and he says, Frank, take this book home, read it, and I promise you it will change your life. And I literally could not put this book down. I read it cover to cover in three or four days, and from that day on, my, my life changed. People ask me, how did one book change your life? And I said, it just wasn't reading a book, it was the messages. It was the first time in my life that I realised that you are what you eat. I've never heard anyone say, prevention is better than cure. I've never heard anyone say, eat to live, where most of us live to eat. I was just compelled to get the message out there. In fact, I think I read every book on internal cleansing that was available in bookshops back then. So I had this vast amount of knowledge. I thought, I really like to open up a health food store. I discussed it with my wife, and at the time, Grace and I had just bought a block of land. And I said, Grace, you know, we, we can't afford to open up the health food store and build the house. And she turned around and said, look, Frank, it's your passion. You know, why don't we open up the health food store and we can build the house another time? It took uh, a lot of courage for Grace to do that, because it was a sacrifice for her. I guess that she believed in my mission and, and wanted to support me. We opened my store on the 1st of November 1982. It was my 28th birthday, one of the most exciting days of my life. I'll never forget it, the first day was packed because the store had just opened. We had all these people walking in and I just talked and talked and talked about this new philosophy of mine. And in fact, I think I hold the world record for talking to one customer at the one time. I remember that Helen came in at nine o'clock in the morning and she helped me close the store in the afternoon. So she was there for eight hours straight. My wife was there at the time and she couldn't believe it. You could see her laughing in the background. I used to talk so much that at times I used to have sometimes 10 people just standing around and listening to my philosophies on natural living, on fasting, on drinking pure water, exercising. I was in my element. Mothers would often come in after they finished shopping in the supermarket and they'd have this trolley full of their weekly groceries. And I'd look at their trolley and I'd ask them, look, do you mind if I go for your trolley, madam? So what I'd do, I'd pull all the, the produce out of their trolley and actually put it on my counter. And I'd only leave in the bottom of their trolley what I thought was, you know, reasonably good nutrition. I'd leave in the fresh meat and the fruits and the vegetables. And I'd look up on the counter soft drink, ice creams, chocolate, biscuits, frozen foods. I says, tell me this, madam, would you go home and empty your dog's water and fill it up with soft drink? And they go, no, of course not. Would you give it biscuits and chocolate for morning tea? No, of course not. I wouldn't do that. Would you give it ice cream for dessert? And they go, no, of course not. And I'd say, well, why not? And they'd always come back with a similar answer, because it'll make them sick. Well, what do you think it's doing to your children? Heart disease does not start at the age of 40. Diabetes does not start at the age of 60. It starts at the age you start eating. It's very important that you really pay attention to what you feed your children because what they eat is what they're going to become. And I found over the years, I've built up this really loyal customer base. And it's 36 years ago now I opened the store. Some of those customers still shop in my store today. And, uh, and if they don't, their children do. After working in my store for about four or five years, I decided that I've got to get my message out to more people. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of interest out there. I should organise a health food fair. It ran for three days. I invited all my suppliers to come in and they occupied all of the shopping centre. So I had soya products and I had bread makers, nutritional experts, the Natural Health Society, the yoga people. I had the Rankin sisters up on stage, chefs that were preparing good natural food. I had everything happening. I'll never forget it. And in fact, we went on to organise another four health food fairs after that. People were hungry to know about nutrition. I'd see customers in my store and I enjoy talking to them. 
Uh, the health food fairs are great. I'm getting out to 10, 15, 20,000 people, but I felt that I needed to reach more people and reach out to, to hundreds, if not millions of people. So I thought, you know, why not start a publication? If I had a newspaper that I could distribute Australia-wide, I could start getting out to the masses. So I started this publication called Health News. And I remember publishing my first copy. I printed 80,000 copies and the paper worked so well. I thought, I've got to get the paper out into more suburbs. I wrote a letter to about 500 health food stores across the country. And to my surprise, I had over 130 stores put in orders for Health News. And the second issue went to 1.1 million copies and was distributed to over one million homes. I remember someone telling me at the time, she says, Frank, do you know that your publication, circulation is actually bigger than the Daily Telegraph? A million copies is probably the biggest circulated newspaper tabloid in the country. So when I go back to having this desire to get out there and educate, I felt at that point in my life that I had achieved a part of that, that mission. After 13 years of working in the store, I realised that many of my suppliers were as knowledgeable as I was in natural living and natural health. And I thought, I'd like to create my own internal cleansing products. I guess I wanted another challenge in my life and be able to offer programs that would help people adopt a healthier lifestyle. So we went from producing one product to having this huge range of herbal supplements and nutritional products. In 2013, I decided to change the name from Totally Natural Products to Caruso's. The company's grown from having you know, a handful of products to over 80 products today. We went from employing one person, myself, to over 40 people. My mission has always been to spread the word on nutrition and the important role that it plays in the prevention of disease. I'm now in my 60s and I can honestly say that I feel just as alert, vibrant and enthusiastic about life today as I did in my 20s. I truly believe that if you embrace the principles of natural health, you can live a long, healthy and vibrant life.